Hello and welcome to STEM with Mr N, where I perform different demonstrations and explain the science behind what we're seeing. This week I'm going to be looking at the building blocks of life as I make a sample section of DNA using sweets. Let's check it out. Plants, fungi and humans might all seem very different, but they all contain tiny building blocks called cells. And with few exceptions, these cells contain within them a molecule which is the blueprint for the organism. This molecule is called deoxyribonucleic acid, more commonly shortened to DNA. Now just like a recipe contains the instructions for making a dish, DNA contains the instructions for making an organism. Although plants, fungi and humans are all very different organisms, the way the DNA works within them to encode the organism is the same. Also, although all humans are very different, we all share about 99.9% .9 of our DNA. Today I'm going to be showing you the structure of DNA by making a short section of this using sweets and explaining how DNA is put together. To make a model DNA strand using sweets, you will require four different colours of gummy bear and three of each colour, two Twizzlers or a similar hard rope sweet, six cocktail sticks, a coloured pen or pencil for each colour of gummy bear you're using and a couple of sheets of paper. Now DNA uses four different chemicals to encode the information that it needs to grow and maintain an organism. These are adenine, thymine, guanine and cytosine. I'm going to match up one colour of gummy bear with one chemical until each gummy bear is matched with a chemical. I'm going to use red for adenine, yellow for thymine, green for guanine and orange for cytosine. The important thing to know about the encoding of DNA is the way that these four chemicals match up. Adenine will only ever pair up with thymine and cytosine will only ever pair up with guanine. So now, using my cocktail sticks, I'm going to put together pairs of chemicals. So I'm going to push one cocktail stick through an adenine bear on one end, and then push a thymine bear onto the other end of the cocktail stick. So I've still got a bit of stick coming out of both sides. I'm going to do this for all my adenine and thymine bears, and then do the same for all of my guanine and cytosine pairs so that I then have six different pairs of chemicals sitting on the table in front of me. Now that I've got all my pairs put together, it's time to add the next part to my model DNA section. A strand of DNA looks a bit like a twisted rope ladder, so now I need to add the backbones to my DNA. To do this, I'm going to put one Twizzler down each side of my pairings. And then I'm going to change the order of my pairings and even flip some round so the colours are on different sides. It doesn't matter what order these come in and it also doesn't matter whether all my A's are on one side or all my G's are on one side, just as long as my pairs are only A's and T's and G's and C's. Once I've changed the order and orientation of my pairings, I'm then going to attach them onto the backbones. To do this I'm going to push one end of the cocktail stick into one Twizzler and then push the other end into the other Twizzler until I have all of my pairings attached onto the Twizzlers and it looks a bit like a ladder. Once all my pairs are attached to these Twizzler backbones, I'm going to go down each side and write down the letter for the chemical that is represented by the gummy bear on that side, again using the colour coding system that I showed you earlier. So I'm going to mark all my thymines in yellow, all my adenines in red, all my guanines in green and all my cytosines in orange. Now that all my pairings are attached to the backbones, there's one last thing I need to do to make this look more like a model of a DNA strand. You might remember earlier that I said that DNA looks a bit like a twisted rope ladder, so that is what I need to do to my model now, put a twist in it. I'm going to hold one end flat 
where I lift the other end and put a single twist into my strand of DNA. Now you will notice that my DNA strand looks more like a typical DNA strand you might see in a picture now that it's got that twist in it. And you might also understand why DNA gets referred to as a double helix. This twist in the DNA strand helps protect the chemicals from other elements contained within the cells. When organisms grow, their cells divide and usually they receive a complete duplicate of the DNA from the original cell. However, if a strand splits apart, due to the ingenious way that DNA is put together, an organism is able to fill in the blanks in the DNA strand. We've already spoken about the fact that adenine only ever matches with thymine and guanine only ever matches with cytosine. That means if I flatten out my model of my DNA strand here back onto the sheet of paper and then cover half of this DNA strand with a sheet of paper, you'll still be able to see what chemicals are down the right hand side, but down the left hand side is covered. However, because we know that A's and T's only match together and G's and C's only match together, you should be able to look at one half of this DNA strand and fill in the blanks of the other half. You could pause the video just now while it's covered and see if you can figure out what should be down the left hand side of that DNA strand. Before I reveal what chemical should be down the left hand side of that DNA strand, First, there are some important things to note here about DNA compared to our section. The section that I have made only has six pairs in it, whereas a typical DNA strand has around three billion pairs. That means I would need to do 500 million times more pairs than I have done, and my model would be about 37,000 miles long. That's one and a half times round the Earth. Strands of DNA are also tiny. They are about two millionth of a millimetre, and that is how they fit inside the cells that make up your body. Also, the chemicals that make up the strands of DNA, the adenine, thymine, guanine and cytosine, are not coloured. I have only coloured them here to make it easier for you to see the chemicals that make up the DNA in my model section. And now it's time to reveal the answers for what should be down the left hand side of that DNA strand. If you've done it correctly, you should have A, C, T, A, C and G. Well, that's all for this week. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please hit the like and subscribe button to stay up to date with all future STEM with Mr N videos. As always, I would like to take this opportunity to answer any science questions you have about any science topics at all. So feel free to email me at stemwithmrn at outlook.com and I'll get back to you with answers to your questions. You can subscribe to the channel by pushing the button here and I've added links here to the other STEM demos I've done so far, here to my STEM career interviews and here to my robot review videos. This has been STEM with Mr N, making a model section of DNA.